So now that you finally know how to set up a simple web server using Express.js, I'm going to show you how we can define routes and access those routes to receive different responses. But first of all, what exactly is a route? Well, think of it like this. Currently, we were trying to access localhost port 3000. Okay, and this was the base route. And we actually don't have anything set up to be returned from the base route. So whenever we try to access it, that's the reason why it said cannot get slash because we didn't have any resolver to map a response back to that route. But a route in general is think of it like a path in your express application. So determining which path you want to take gives you different outputs. So for example, if you go to, let's say, the user's route, let's say if I have a user's route defined on my server, this will give me a list of users. If I wanted to get a list of products, I would access the products route. And all you do is just, you just add this forward slash and then the name of the route at the end of the host name and the port. In actual real uh, applications that are deployed, you typically don't have the port uh, exposed like this. So it would just be after the host name like something like localhost test.com slash products. Okay. So you define these routes on your express server, and then you allow your clients to make requests to those routes. Now, remember how in the introduction I mentioned in order to request data from the client to the backend server, you need to make an HTTP request. Well, there are actually different types of HTTP requests, and these are known as HTTP verbs. So these verbs pretty much are ways on how you can tell the server to perform some operation. So for example, you don't always want to just get data. Sometimes you might want to create data by saving it to the database once it's reached the server. Sometimes you want to update data. Sometimes you want to delete data. There are different types of request methods that we use to handle these operations. And you'll learn that later on. But first, let's go ahead and set up a simple get request. So let's go ahead and reference the app. And we're going to go ahead and call this get method right over here. And it's going to take in an argument, which is going to be a string as the first argument. And right over here is where you can specify what route you want to register in your express app. So currently I don't have any route handling the base forward slash route. So I'm going to go ahead and configure a route for that. So whenever the user visits this route, they will receive a response. But we actually need another piece in order for this whole thing to work. We need what is called a request handler. And that is actually the second argument to app.get. So the request handler is just a function. But in this case, it's a callback function. So it would look like this. So I'll pass a simple arrow function. And this callback function has two arguments. Okay, it has a request argument, which is the request object itself. This contains everything related to the incoming HTTP request. So for example, if you passed in HTTP headers from the client side to the server side, that would be inside the headers property in the request object. If you were to send data in the request body, that would be accessed by grabbing it from the request body property. If you wanted to access cookies, if you want to access the IP address, all of this stuff comes from the request object. Okay. Now the second argument is the response object. The response object is what you can use to modify the response and send it back to the user. So you can set the status code as an example. You can send back uh, data. You can send back text. You can send, send back HTML. You can send back text. You can send back HTML, you can send back a JSON object, whatever it is that you want. So let's go ahead and reference the response object to send back a response. So I can reference response and call the send method. And I'll just send back a simple hello world string, just simple plain text. So now if I visit the localhost port 3000, and if I go to just the base route, you can see it says hello world. Okay, pretty simple. I can go ahead and also send back a JSON object. I'll say hello. I refresh. I now see it is parsed in this JSON format right over here. Uh, I can also set the status code as well. So 
I can do that very easily by referencing response.status. And this is a method, so you can just pass in whatever status code you want. I'll set it to, just for demonstration purposes, I'll set it to 201. 201 is actually used for post requests whenever you create a resource, but I just want to show you that this is what the status code is because by default, the status code, whenever it is successful, is a 200 status code. Okay, and after you set the status code, you can actually chain these methods together. So after I call dot status, I can also just call dot send and then just pass in a request a response body. So now if I refresh and let me open up the uh, let's see the network tab right over here. You can see that now the status code says 201. Let's go ahead and define a few more routes so that way you all get the hang of this. So I'll go ahead and define a route uh, called slash users. Now, whenever you are building APIs, you typically want to prefix all of your endpoints with a slash API prefix. And this is industry standard. A lot of companies that have APIs do this. It's just good practice. So I would highly recommend you all to follow this approach. Okay. So slash API slash users. So this is now our route. So whenever we access this in our browser, we don't visit slash users. We're visiting slash API slash users. Okay. So as a second argument, we need our request handler, of course. So let's pass in the request and response object. And what I'll do is I'll simply just send back an array of fake users. So I'm just going to pass in an array in the send method as an argument. And in my array, I'll just provide some users. So I'll set the ID to one username, Anson, display name, Anson. We'll keep it simple. I will just copy and paste this a few more times and just change up the values. So let's do Jack. And then Adam. Now let's save. Okay, and now whenever I go to the browser, and let me just kind of like move this over to the, to the side a bit. When I go to slash API slash users, this is the route or the endpoint. I'm going to use those terms synonymously, route and endpoint. This is the route that I am going to be making a request to from the browser. In this case, the browser is our client. Okay, we're making a request to slash API slash users. And then when I hit enter, you can see as a response, this is what I get back. I get back this array, and this array has three users. Okay, and if you were getting this data, let's say on your React code, you would render this out to the client so they can actually see all the users. Okay, let's go ahead and create one more. Let's do app.get. Let's do uh, slash API slash uh, products request and response. So now you should get the hang of doing all of this. And the whole reason why I'm showing you multiple examples is that way. So you are familiar with this. So once again, we have our endpoint, our route name defined right over here, slash API slash products. And then we also have our request handler. And I'm going to go ahead and send back a response now. So I will reference the response object. And I'm going to go ahead and call a dot send. And then what I'll do is I'll just send back an uh, a JSON object, which is this, in this case is going to be an array. And I'll do the same thing, ID of let's do one, two, three, username, or what am I doing? Not username. Uh, let's do name. Let's do chicken breast. And then price. Let's do 12.99. Okay, and now if I go to the browser and if I visit slash API slash products, so I'm making a request to this route, it's going to give me that array of products. And I can see this stuff right over here.